Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here back in Photoshop for some sci-fi analog glowing green pixelated monitor effects, trying to figure out how to describe it. A couple really cool things about this look. It's not just some kind of a color or texture overlay. We're almost gonna simulate our own real monitor that'll break the image up into this pixelated grid. We can adjust the image and the pixels turn on and off. It's pretty cool just seeing how it works. I'll include everything you need to create these two slightly different looks, but we can also use this setup to create a whole variety of different techie looking monitor effects. And as a thank you to Texture Labs Patreon supporters, I've got an extra set of special pattern tiles to activate all of these looks. But right now, let's get into Photoshop and get started. All right, I've got an image here that I'll use to set up this effect. I found this astronaut on Pexels and then overlaid an eyeball in here. So first of all, let me run through the premise of how this is going to work, because it is kind of interesting. What we're going to do is use a pattern, very, very simple pattern. This is a single tile of the pattern. It's 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. And all it is is a black background with three rectangles in different gray values. You can make your own pattern tile like this, or I'll post this up and you guys can download it below. But let's just take the single tile of the pattern and drop it on a gray background. And then I'm gonna switch the blending mode over to the Texture Labs channel's favorite blending mode, Hard Mix. So on a gray background using Hard Mix, we end up with solid black and one white rectangle. Hard Mix is a contrast blending mode, like overlay and everything in this section. It combines these two layers and then brings up the contrast according to their combined values. It's just that Hard Mix cranks the contrast so much that when we're using it on black and white images, it spits out either pure white or pure black. So here, when we combined these two layers, the only area that was bright enough to give us white was in this rectangle. But if I adjust the value of this gray underneath and make it a little bit brighter, there's a moment where we'll get two rectangles. The combined value here is now just bright enough to cross that threshold from black to white. Keep making the gray brighter and we'll get three rectangles. Or if this gray underneath is super dark, we'll get none. Or if it's pure white, we'll get all white. So what this means is that while this layer underneath can be any value of gray, with this pattern on top, we can only get these five possible outcomes. So here's how we're gonna put that to use. I'm gonna take this one tile and define this as a pattern. I'll call the pattern pixelate. Then let's go back to the image. And what we want is to make this into a bunch of simple gray squares that line up with the pattern. First, I'm gonna grab both of these layers, right click and convert them to a smart object. So we can always adjust things or change out the source. Then first of all, I'm just gonna use a hue saturation adjustment and remove the color from this image completely. We wanna be working in black and white and gray here. I'm also just gonna right click and delete this filter mask. I just have a thing about having masks that I'm not using. Then I'm gonna apply the mosaic filter. You might have a sense of how this is gonna work. So the pattern is 100 pixels wide by 100 tall. Let's also make these mosaic squares 100 pixels. Then I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna put a levels adjustment on this layer. I won't do much with it now, but once we turn these into giant pixels, it's gonna be really cool the way we can adjust these values. So if I zoom way in here, we've got these gray squares and let's say I pasted in just one of these pattern tiles and set it to hard mix. So it's sitting here over a darker gray square, so it's lighting up one rectangle. But if it's down here, this gray is bright enough to light up two rectangles. We could probably find a spot that would light up all three or none, or if we found a pure white square, it would go pure white. So instead of a single tile, let's apply that pattern across the entire image. I don't even need it on a new layer. We can use the pattern overlay layer style effect. I'll set it to the pixelate pattern. Now, if I bring the opacity down a little bit on this pattern overlay, in order to get the pattern to line up with the mosaic squares, I actually need to turn off link with layer and hit snap to origin. The mosaic effect always gets applied starting at this top left corner of the document, and this way the pattern will do the same thing. All right, then I'm gonna switch the pattern over to hard mix, bring the opacity all the way up, and there we go. We've made the image very, very lo-fi. It's almost impossible to see because it's just made up of a couple of rectangles. But if I double click on the levels effect and change some of these values around, you can still see in the thumbnail, I'm just pushing around the brightness and contrast of the image. And we do get these rectangles updating and almost turning on and off like giant pixels. This is obviously pretty extreme, like a super close up of a monitor. So let's change the scale a little bit. The mosaic right now is creating one 100 pixel squares, let's take it down to 30. Then to make the pattern line up, we also need to take the scale of the pattern down to 30. 
So there we go, tons of tiny rectangles. It's kind of like one of those flip dot displays at a train station. It is a very rigid effect with this pattern creating these specific rectangles. Let's adjust it a little bit by applying a different pattern. So I've got a similar pattern tile here. This one's a little bit more complex and it has some soft edges, but it basically functions the same way. I'm gonna define this as a pattern and we'll call this one soft pixels. I'll include a link below as well if you wanna download this pattern. Then I'm gonna double click on the pattern overlay and apply soft pixels. It creates a very similar effect, but maybe not quite so literal. And there's actually a little bit more variation in how each tile can look. And we can still adjust the levels and see how it reacts to different values. All right, then from here, what's really gonna set this off is giving it some treatment, some nice organic color and glowing effects. So let's take a look at how we can do that without flattening anything. We can keep everything about this effect live and adjustable. First of all, I wanna convert this layer from being white pixels on black to being white pixels on transparent. Very easy to do. The layer is pure black and white. So I can double click on the layer to bring up the blending options. And in the blend if section, I can drag the black slider for this layer just anywhere above zero. However, I also need to turn on blend interior effects as group. That means Photoshop will also take this pattern into account before it knocks out the blacks. So a little bit hard to see, but we've got white shapes on a transparent background. So I'm going to need a solid black in the background just so we can see anything. Now, what I wanna do is add some glowing effects to these pixel dots, but we've already got some pretty specific stuff happening with the pattern overlay and the blend if settings. But what I can do is just put this layer into a group and that kind of isolates those effects and lets us just start from scratch with a new layer style, just as though this were a regular layer. If you watched the last Texture Labs video, I appreciate that. Either way, we're gonna use the same hack of the drop shadow effect to create a really nice glow. It'll still make sense if you haven't seen that video, but I'm gonna move through it a little bit faster and you can always check out that video for a little more detail if you want. So I'm using drop shadow instead of outer glow. Pretty much all of these effects are variations on the same thing. So we can use drop shadow as a glow by switching the blending mode to add and then going to a brighter color. So let's make this a bright green. I'll take the opacity all the way up and bring the size down to three. So that looks kind of like an outer glow. It's a little bit offset, like a glitchy old monitor. But here's a really cool thing about drop shadow. If I go up to the blending options for this layer and I bring the fill down to zero, that leaves us with just the drop shadow, right? But back in drop shadow, I'm gonna turn off this little checkbox, layer knocks out drop shadow, and we can eliminate that negative space. And what we end up with is basically a live Gaussian blur effect. We can even add a tiny bit of noise to it, maybe 5% and make it look a little bit grainy. And here's another cool thing about Drop Shadow. Unlike Outer Glow, it's got this little plus button, meaning we can have multiple instances of it. So let's add another Drop Shadow, maybe make this one a little bit different hue of green, make it a little bit bigger. I'll make the size of this one 10 pixels, and I'm gonna turn off Use Global Light and change the angle of this one. And that's gonna create kind of a cool offset ghosting effect. I'll take the opacity on this one down to 50%. And the idea here is to create a couple of different copies of the drop shadow effect. And with each of them, maybe change the color, but most importantly, make each one a little bit bigger than the last. So this is kind of the experiment zone. If you wanna recreate these exact settings, I'll include the size and the color and the details in the description below, or I'll put them up on screen and you can just pause it and copy the settings if you want. But basically each drop shadow gets bigger with kind of random angles. So we get all this cool ghosting happening. Even the preview kind of looks like a single glitchy pixel. Finally, let's add one more effect, the inner glow effect. I'll change the source to center and bring the opacity up to about 70. That'll create a few areas where things get a little bit brighter and kind of go toward white. All right, there we go, let's hit OK. And we've got a very cool effect happening. Even with all this glow and color, we can still adjust the levels and kind of dial in the brightness or double click the smart object and change the source completely, experiment with different images, change up the size on the mosaic and the pattern overlay. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that with the same setup, you can get a whole variety of different looks just with slightly different patterns. If you're a Texture Labs Patreon supporter, I've got a set of pattern presets to get all kinds of cool looks, even a matrix themed one. If you make a few different copies using this pattern at different scales, then layer them up and add some directional blur. You can get some cool matrix looks going. Either way, I hope you guys enjoy experimenting with this effect. Lots more on the way from the Texture Labs channel, so be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.